Hello there. All right, this is chapter five, part two on connective tissue. And while I'm here recording this lecture for you, my wife is off watching The Bachelor. Who do you think is having a better time? That's all right, though. Uh, let's get through these. There's not too many slides to uh, talk about here. So what is connective tissue in general? Uh, purpose is to protect, support, and to hold together other tissues. And, and binding together is actually quite crucial, of course. Uh, most of them are well vascularized, meaning uh, they have very good blood flow, but there are some uh, tendons and ligaments. Tendons connect muscle to your skeleton, and ligaments connect bone to bone. Uh, these are found in your joints, of course. Uh, and then cartilage. These are not well vascularized, which uh, is unfortunate because if you damage them, uh, then it's very difficult to heal them, and typically you might need surgery. Uh, connective tissue. Uh, incorporates the extracellular matrix. So this is all the various carbohydrates and proteins that are found between cells, uh, on the outsides of the cell. They're uh, produced by connective tissue cells and then secreted to the exterior. So you'll hear uh, at various times in this lecture stuff talked about like a ground substance or uh, collagen fibers, for example. These are fibers that are created by cells, but the cells may be very far apart and there's lots and lots of fibers or lots and lots of this extracellular matrix. Um, it can be liquid or it can be gel-like or very hard. Uh, all different kinds of uh, ECM and you saw some of the ECM in the videos we showed in class. Uh, and then of course it can be weight-bearing, uh, can withstand stretching and various other types of things. So very tough. And then there's the fibers that I mentioned also um, as part of this, which include collagen, uh, elastic fibers which get their, get their name surprisingly because they are elastic. And then uh, reticular fibers, which are very fine collagen and have, have some elasticity um, or some give, but not as much as uh, elastic fibers. They're also a little bit tougher. So connective tissue from the most rigid to the softest, so the toughest to the, to the softest is, goes from bone to cartilage, and then dense connective tissue, loose connective tissue, and blood. Yes, blood is a connective tissue, as weird as that sounds, and it is the softest or least rigid. Uh, bone, we won't get into too much. You don't have to know a lot of these details. Uh, the main thing that I want to point out is that bone cells are called osteocytes. You can see that here. Um, and they have a really good blood supply. So if you break a bone or something, you can recover really rapidly. Um, the bone will heal quite well. And of course, it's very, very hard. It's the most rigid. Uh, cartilage is the next one in line. Um, and it's a supportive framework for all kinds of structures. Now there's actual cartilage cells, and these are called chondrocytes. You see the, the suffix here, cytes mean cells, and chondro refers to cartilage. Um, and they lie in this gel-like fluid matrix. So there's cells, and in between the cells are, is this gel connectivity. Um, and the problem again with cartilage is that if you damage it, uh, it's very difficult to repair So uh, or you're, by yourself. You have to have uh, surgery of some sort. Here you see an example of the uh, knee joint and you see uh, the grayish portion there is the cartilage being shown uh, as protection, as a, uh, to soften the blow of bone on bone, of course. Now, there are three types of cartilage. There's hyaline cartilage, there's elastic cartilage, and fibrocartilage. Uh, hyaline cartilage is super abundant. Uh, it's fine collagen, and it's found at the ends of the bones, almost all the bones, and it also supports the respiratory passage. What do we mean by supports respiratory passages? Well, if you feel your neck here, your trachea, um, you can actually feel these little uh, bulges sticking out. Um, that's actually cartilage, that's hyaline cartilage that's there to protect your trachea in case somebody walks by and just decides to go hi and hits your trachea. It's there to protect you. Uh, elastic cartilage is your ears and your nose and also part of your larynx. It's a little bit elastic so it can move. Um, still there for support, but it is elastic. And then last one is fibrocartilage here. Uh, it's the toughest, the most dense. Uh, it's the, a very strong shock absorbing uh, cartilage. It's found in between the uh, vertebrae uh, supporting you uh, and also, also found in the uh, pelvic girdle and the knees, the other joints that take a major, um, major trauma or major uh, weight uh, in your body. All right, dense connective tissue uh, it is full of col um, collagen fibers and it's very strong, but again, it lacks a very good blood supply. So uh, it has a hard time healing. Uh, it's made by fibroblasts. Um, and here, here you can see fibroblast cells. These are the nuclei being shown. And then in between, you see these long fibers that are created by these fibroblasts. 
Um, just so you know, the suffix blast or blast, they're always uh, cells that create other things. Um, and dense connective tissue is actually the basis for tendons and ligaments. Then we get to, if it goes, am I freezing here? Uh-oh. Sorry about that, we had some technical difficulties here. Uh, we just finished with dense connective tissue. Uh, now we're on loose connective tissue. So loose connective tissue, of course, is uh, very delicate. <clears throat> Excuse me, it holds um, the organs uh, together, structures together. It, is, it does come from fibroblasts, of course. Um, and these fibroblasts are actually pretty far uh, distantly spaced. Um, and then there's lots of this gel-like um, ground tissue or ground substance in between and that ground substance is filled with uh, is all kinds of collagen and elastic fibers and so on. Um, but these fibroblasts are making this, um, this collagen and elastic fibers that holds all the different parts of the body, the, uh, the organs and things together. Uh, it actually also even binds your skin to the underlying organs uh, as in the uh, epithelial tissues inside the mouth, even the skin itself, uh, to the other organs underneath. Um, all right. And so here you actually see some loose connective tissue. It's not the fat, but the loose connective tissue here. Uh, areolar tissue uh, is a type of loose. These next couple are actually types of loose connective tissue. Um, of all of them, so loose connective tissue is the most common in the body, but areolar is the most common type of loose connective tissue. Uh, and it's the type, it's the one that cushions and protects body organs. It wraps around them, uh, helps them. It's the glue that holds them together. And these, uh, the areolar tissue uh, actually goes in opposing directions and just forms this giant meshwork that you can see here, all these fibers going who knows which way, uh, creating this very strong and, and buoyant support, so to speak, this glue that to hold uh, tissues together, to hold uh, organs together. Then we have adipose tissue, again, also a loose connective tissue. Its job is really to hold fat. It creates padding. Um, it stores the fat for energy purposes. All this white stuff that you see in there uh, is actual fat. And these cells can enlarge and grow as you gain more and more fat. The cells can enlarge and get bigger and bigger just by adding more membrane. Um, and also insulates the body, of course. The, the more weight you carry, the fatter you are, uh, the warmer your body temperature will be or the more warmth you will have. And in fact, interesting point, uh, the colder areas of the United States actually have a higher percentage of body fat. Um, whether that's because it insulates and helps to deal with temperature or because they are outside less during the year so they can't exercise as much outdoors. That's uh, up for debate, but interesting nonetheless. Reticular connective tissue, this is also this interwoven, interconnected meshwork of connective tissues. Uh, and it also is this supportive framework um, for internal organs, mainly the liver, uh, wraps around the liver um, and holds the liver in place. And then also the lymphatic organs like lymph nodes, um, um, the spleen and, and so on, all these parts of the uh, lymphatic system. And last slide, there's other ones that we just kind of skip over in this because we get into them more in detail, that being uh, neurons and muscle cells and so on. You'll get some of the muscles in as part of your reading, um, the different types of muscles and so on. But uh, blood is the last one. It's the least dense of all, uh, of all the connective tissues. Uh, so there's two types of blood cells. There's red blood cells and white blood cells. Um, and they're suspended in what is called the plasma, that liquidy stuff. The third thing found in blood are called platelets. Um, platelets are not actually cells. They come from cells, but they're small little fragments of cells. They're not full cells themselves. Um, and the blood is uh, formed inside the red bone marrow. Uh, we'll get more detail on, on marrow later uh, in a different unit. But uh, in any case, that is blood. Now, that's the end of lecture, but I did want to also show you this one uh, nice review video of all the different types of tissues. So sit back and watch. It's all of one minute long. The cells in the body do not function in isolation. They function in complex groups called tissues. There are four types of tissue in the human body. Epithelial tissue is made of cells intertwined with one another. This tissue forms the coverings that line various parts of the body, including the surface of the skin. Conjunctive tissue is much more loosely bound together it is formed of a gelatinous substance containing relatively few cells, 
along with fibers. So this is connective tissue, right? That the tissue that makes up the body's organs is conjunctive tissue. Muscle tissue is made of bundles of elongated cells. It is the main component of the muscles attached to the skeleton. Finally, nerve tissue, composed of tangles of neurons, forms the brain, the spinal cord, and the nerves. Each tissue in the body has a specific function because of its composition and the types of cells it contains. Uh, that narrator is some kind of exciting. And we're done.